So lately we've uh, been doing a lot of school districts and, you know, in education stuff. So one big thing we've been doing a lot is, is with this paging groups. So we've, depending on the type of, you know, customer or company you run, companies that have warehouses or large buildings or multiple buildings, paging groups and paging systems become very, you know, integrated parts of their business. And really important as far as notification for safety purposes. So, a couple of the features we can, you know, we can do with page groups is most people know that we can do it. We can we can make announcements on the phone. So I dial an extension and I turn let's say 20 phones come off hook, and over the speakerphone I just make an announcement. Hey, this is Chris. I'm just locking up. If anybody's here, please call me at extension 7535. You know, so that's a, a very basic use of a paging group, just to, in case everybody doesn't have keys or you're turning on the alarm system at, at night. A lot of companies will just do a page throughout the building, just let everybody know, hey, I'm locking up. If you're still here, let me know. An another good use is overhead paging systems. You put in overhead paging systems to cover big buildings or, you know, warehouses. We dial an extension, we turn on the overhead paging system, and we make announcements, you know, hey, Travis, you have a call, you know, on extension 7535. Or, hey, Travis, give me a call. You know, please call tra extension 7535. So good uses over overhead paging systems. What a lot of customers don't know is we can actually mix the two together. If you have certain areas that you have an overhead paging system because you don't have as many phones, but you have phones in other areas, we can actually mix the two together. We can actually go off hook on a, on a batch of phones and turn on the, in the overhead paging system and make a simultaneous announcement to both. So that, that's a pre, you know pretty nice feature for our customers that have warehouse space. The other nice use is called priority paging, and customers in medical and stuff you know, sometimes will use this if they need to make you know an emergency page. And you can actually put if I'm talking on the phone to somebody and you need to make a page, the system can actually put my call on hold, play me the page, the emergency page, and then when the page is over, I go back to my my call that was on hold. And it's called a priority page. So. We, we can do a page of up to 100 people. In most cases, when we're paging that many people, it's going to do them in groups of 20 just to not overload your server or your, you know, if your, your network side. If we connect to 100 phones simultaneously, it does create a big network spike. So it usually does 20 phones, and then it stages them. So it does 20 phones, 20 phones, and it'll do five groups of 20 phones. So the page may take 30 to, you know, to 40 seconds to complete if we're going to do a, a full 100 users, which is the cap. Most of our customers are in that 20 to 30 range where it can do it either in one group or, you know, it split them in half and do it in two groups. So there's two parts to a paging group. The first part is building an extension list. An extension list is really, just like it says, we, you know, we need, to, we need to create a list, name it, and put the users that are in that list. And that's step one using extension lists. Other uses for extension lists, if you have an auto attendant and you want to say, hey, press one for a dial by first name directory. But maybe at the Portland location, when they dial a, a one for a first name directory, maybe we only want to allow them to dial people in the Portland office, not all of our other locations. I can create an extension list and just put my Portland employees in it. And then in my auto attendant, when they dial, press one, I can select my extension list so they only can select from my Portland users. Another use is sometimes the executive team or the, you know, the management team doesn't want to be in the dial by name directory. So we create an extension list and we put all the employees in it and then we remove the few admins that we want from the you know, executives from the system and we assign that to the auto attendant. So a couple of uses for the, you know, for the extension list there. So to create one, we simply click the users, go down to extension list, and on the right-hand side, you'll see any of the extension lists you currently have. You can either select one, delete it, click on it to open it up, or hit the new button to, to create one from scratch. So obviously, we're going to create one from scratch. So I'm going to click the new button, and I'll get the edit extension list page. Just like everything else we've been doing today, I need to give it a name. Whatever I give this name, it's not going to be – nobody in the system is going to see this name. It's not available in communicator via the directory button. The extension lists are only available to see via the server director page. And this is a lot simpler if you notice here. Really, I give it a name, and then I just need to put people into this list. So if I'm doing an engineering team, I just need to put all my engineering team, which I didn't, even, I didn't put all my engineers in there. But, or if I wanted to create a Portland location, I put all my Portland employees you know, into here, or a whole company directory, 
I put, I, you know, I can simply add all the users that I want to this list, and then I simply click the Save button on the top, and that creates my my extension list. You can create as many extension lists as you need. So if we have auto extends for all your locations or paging groups for each location, we can have an extension list that says Portland, Seattle, San Jose. You know, we just did a separate extension list for each location, so we can have paging groups for each of your different locations. The next step is now that we have an extension list. Well, obviously I, there wasn't a, there was no extension number or anything on that extension list, so we need a way to assign a phone number to that extension list. That's where pager groups come in. With a pager group, it's that's the extension side of things. Is we pick an extension to assign to a paging group, and the pager group is is what's going to control our extension list for us. So we expand our call control right above our call control above, above our route points that we used earlier. We go two up, and we have our our paging groups. From here, we can modify, delete, add our new paging groups. So obviously, I'm going to click new again. And this gives us our paging group configuration page. So I give it a name. Whatever name you do give it in here is going to be in the directory on the phones and in the communicator. So two ways of doing it. A lot of our customers who are going to do a lot of paging groups, what they'll do is in the, in the name field, they put the word page and then a space hyphen and then a location or a description. That way, when, when you're looking in the directory and you type the word page, you get all of your paging groups in one list. So you'll have page, Portland, Seattle, San Jose, you know, Los Angeles, San Diego, you know, the different locations that you can page to. And that keeps them all close together and, you know, all together. Instead of typing engineering and then getting, you know, different engineering groups and then a page, if I put page in first, you can keep them all together. So we pick an extension number for assigning to this group. And then we need a server. So if you have multiple locations, do you have voicemail servers at different locations? you can assign this paging group to whatever the local server is. So if I have a server in Seattle with my office up there, there's no reason for me to do my page in Portland just to send the page across our internet connection up to Seattle. And then, you know, every, every, all those pages are going to go across our internet connection. So we can assign it to whatever server is local to the users that we're going to be paging. The next option is our dial by name directory. This is should this paging group be available in our dial by name directory? For the most part, yes. Every once in a while, customers say, "Well, we don't want all the regular employees knowing about this paging extension, so we'll take it out of the dial by name directory." That takes it out of the phone directory. The next one is make number private. This is how you can hide it from the communicator. So if you just wanted to use this for emergency pages, what a lot of our customers will do in that case if they're use, looking to use that feature is they'll uncheck this dial by name and they'll check the make private. And then they'll program a button on a phone that just says dial extension 1846. And they'll label it page. And then when they click, when they physically push that button, it'll do a page. But it's really a hidden extension in the system. Nobody, unless they have access to Shorewood Director, they can't look up this extension. They can't find this extension. You have, to, you have to know the actual extension number in order to use this feature. So sometimes that's a nice, you know, nice thing to have if you don't want you know, people paging, you know, or, or everybody having access to overhead paging or to like priority paging. A lot of time if it's an emergency page, they'll program a button on everybody's phone but hide it from the system so nobody can accidentally type, you know, page and, 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 and do an emergency page. The next option you'll see there is the priority paging. And that's what we talked about. If I check that box, anytime I page this engineering group, it's going to put anybody's phone call on hold, make my announcement, and then go back to it. If I uncheck that box, we're going to say if Travis is on the phone when this page happens and he's in the group, give him a second call using call waiting and let him decide if he's going to go ahead and answer that page and group call or not. And then right below you see no answer number rings. So we're going to give Travis two rings in that case if he was you know, on the phone to answer the paging call. If he doesn't answer it, we're just going to skip him and, and make the, the page the announcement to everybody else in that group. When we're doing our priority paging, we have the two options for delivering. Active audio path is the most common because that way if I'm talking on my headset and you do a page and you want to put my call on hold, the audio will actually just play into my headset because that's what I was talking to my customer on or other employee on. The other option is speakerphone. So put my call on hold on my, on my headset, play the announcement on my speakerphone. 
So that's your, your second option for group, group delivery. I usually recommend active audio path unless you're using the speaker phones to make announcements in like areas. So maybe you're not putting every phone in an area, but you still wanted to play this page. That's where I would use speaker phones. So that way, if one or two phones per like cubicle block is doing the paging, we'd want speaker phone so that the other phones around or users around those speaker phones could hear the, uh, the paging announcement and they wouldn't miss out because somebody was on the phone on the, on, that was included in that group. So we hit a, I hit a little bit on no answer number of rings. I usually recommend only ringing it two to three times because when I, make, when I record my page, it's going to ring out to those phones. It does delay the page until it hits that two or three ring timeout. So you want to keep it fairly short as far as the number of rings. I'm not sure why you would ever want to do 255 rings, but for some reason, some, some engineer thought that that should be the limit. So then you select your extension list here. So in the if I ex extension list, I just have a drop down. It just lets me select, allows me to select from any of the extension lists that we have. I can hit edit extension list if I say, oh, well, I need to make sure who was in this list because I forgot who I built in the list, this list if it was an existing list. Add some users, delete some users. You know, hit the save on the extension list, and I can come back to this page and group page. The last option on the bottom is the group paging synchronization. So if we're doing a lot of users, what it tries to do is it tries to synchronize the page. That way, if we're doing 20 phones, it wants all 20 phones to play the greeting or the message at the exact same time, rather than if one phone and, you know, gets connected to the server faster than the other phone. We're going to wait three seconds to get as many of the phones connected as possible, and then we're going to go ahead and play the announcement. Otherwise, you kind of get what's called a wave effect, where if I turn that down to zero, once a phone connects, it starts playing the greeting. So we can have throughout the office, you can actually hear it playing on a bunch of different phones at the exact same time, but in a delay. So one, well, one might be a few seconds ahead, one might be you know four or five seconds behind, and sometimes some of the faster you know, connecting phones, if they're like gigabit or something, they'll connect, they'll play the greeting before the next phone even you know, gets to, to starting it. So delay usually three to five seconds is, is what's recommended to synchronize just so we, we play as many of them at the same time. The more phones that are playing in secret, synchronized at the same time, the easier it's going to be for your employees to hear those paging announcements in the system. So that's where we want to kind of do a balance of the no answer number of rings and the page group synchronization to find where we can get the most of the users using this at the exact same time and where it's useful. Or if there's 20 phones all playing at the same time, it's going to be pretty loud in there. So everybody has, is going to have a chance to hear it where then if we're playing 10, you know, 10 different, you know, variations of the same greeting. So once we hit the save button at the top, in order to initiate a page, we just simply dial 1846. There is one catch to this. If I dial 1846, there is a user group permission that I can block. So I can block user groups from being able to use paging groups. So if it's something that we only want managers to be able to place calls to paging groups, in my user group permissions, there's a little checkbox that says allow initiation of, you know, of paging groups. So they just, uh, we uncheck that box and that disables certain phones. So if you have maybe phones in the lobby or, you know, just courtesy phones that you allow your customers to use, a lot of time we'll create a user group that just doesn't allow them to page because for some reason if they hit the directory or something on that phone, we don't want them to be able to make an announcement over your whole paging system. So a lot of time we'll create a user group that blocks that or certain user groups that only have access. So we block it for everybody by default and we only give it access to one user group. So that's one thing to kind of keep in mind as you as you're planning paging groups is who do you want to be able to page and we can kind of our engineering team can assist with deploying paging groups or voicemail distribution lists or route points any any, any of the things that you know we're kind of talking about today our engineering team can help you know get you some screenshots if you need you know or if you say hey I got this bill can you can can you jump in and just take a look great yeah that's you know We'll jump into the system. We could do a, a, a joint session and look through your configuration, maybe rec make any recommendations as needed. And then you know, we always just recommend the easiest way, you know, to, to figure out is just do a couple of tests, you know, do a test page at the end of the business day or the beginning of the day and just, you know, see how, see how it is. Sometimes you need to, we need to tweak how many phones are in there or by adding them or lowering them if it's too loud or, you, or some certain areas can't hear it. Might just need to add a few more extensions into the, into the paging group 
on one side of the building if, they're, if the phones are a little bit more spread out. Sometimes it gets a little bit crazy if you put every phone in the building because phones right next to each other, you know, if, they're, if you have cubicles that are pretty close together, it can get really loud in there. So a lot of times customers will try to space it out every few desks they'll do, they'll add to the paging group. And Chris, actually, one, and this, I'm, I'm going out of sequence here a little bit. Can you spend just a couple seconds on, since we are talking about some short tails advanced applications, they do have a, an advanced paging application that augments the, the, the paging capabilities of short tail. Can you talk about that real quick? So people understand yeah, that. It, it, yeah, when short tail made it, it used to be called like super group paging or so I can't remember the original name for it. And they actually wrote it for a couple of customers who needed to page more than 100 phones. So, you know, they needed to page two, three, four, five hundred 500 phones. But from a resource standpoint, they couldn't really accomplish that without overloading their server. So what they did is they wrote a pay, an, an advanced paging application. We have some customers who have it. And what it does is we create groups of users in it. And what it does is it'll page, if I put 400 users, it'll page them out in groups. So really what we're doing is we're taking those extension lists in this kind of same theory, and we're just paging different extension lists at a time. So we do one recording for the paging group, and then it just plays out to these 50 users and these 50 users, you know, and it can it can span multiple locations. And it's just an application that, that you configure, put the different users into it, and you can build multiple groups. So you can have a, you know, a manufacturing group that only pages all of your manufacturing, you know, buildings or something like that, but then you can have an all page and that spans multiple locations or something like that. And it just allows you to add more than 100 users and page them in, you know, with one page announcement without having to call 10 or 12 different extensions. You can call one extension and let the system take care of, of routing to, to, to the different locations. 